In this video, I'll be showing you how you can create a tower of blocks like this one just here. We'll be starting with the simple default cube and using a series of modifiers, the array modifier specifically, to build this tower. Uh, having built the tower, guys, I'll show you how you can separate it into its constituent parts and also how to fix a bit of an issue with the origin on those parts. Uh, by default, those origins won't be centered, so I'll show you how you can easily fix that as well. So let's get started. Let's uh, throw this away and start from scratch. So file, new general, let's get started. So I might also just select the camera and the light just here, tapping X and then delete to delete those. And let's just uh, start off nice and clean with our default cube. The panels on the right just over here, guys, this one in the upper right corner, you can see here is the outliner panel. That shows you all the elements within your scene. And currently we have just a single cube. Okay, so we have that cube selected, and then down here in our properties panel, this guy just here, we have the little wrench icon just here. If I click on that, add modifier. So again, our cube is selected, add modifier, let's add an array. So you can see a second cube was indeed added here. Let's have a bit of a look through these options just in here for the array. So there's the little triangle just here, guys, if you need to. Twirl that closed, you can. Click that again to twirl that open. Now I won't show you all of the options in here, just the major ones. The first one here is the count. It comes in as two by default. Let me increase that to three. Now we're going to use three, but I just wanna show you, you can add as many as you like. I'll just bring that back to three. Now you can see all the cubes are jutted up against each other. If that's what you want, that's cool. But in this example, I want a small space between them. Now that's controlled here via the relative offset. I'm going to change that from one to 1.1. Now that's also on the X axis here, guys. So this here is the value for X, Y, and Z. So we currently have zero on X and Y, excuse me, on Y and Z, and 1.1 on X. So the 1.1 is what's giving us that nice little spacing just in there. Now guys, uh, I'm not going to use this, but I just wanted to point out, you can set a constant offset if you wish. I'm just going to continue to use the relative offset. So that's pretty much all we need, guys. So we've used this a array modifier to create a series of cubes along the x-axis. Let's now add a second array modifier. So I'm just going to close up this first, just so we've got a bit of room to play with it just here. And go straight back to add modifier, array. So you can see it's added a second array modifier. Now I'll just zoom out a little bit just here. So you can see what it's actually done is duplicated the first bit of content also along the x-axis, but rather than the x, we want it to be in the y-axis this time. So down in the relative offset section, let's change the x value from one to zero, and the y value, I will change that to 1.1, and then let's come back to the count, and I'll increase that to three. Excellent, so we've got a nice little uh, three by three grid going on just there. Let's add a third array modifier to get us into the vertical direction. So add modifier, array, let's come down to count, increase that to three, change the relative offset for X to zero, and then come down to the Z section and change that to 1.1. Just clicking away, and there we go. So we've completed our little tower, fantastic. Now I should point out, just up here guys in the uh, outliner panel, we still have a single cube. So we still only have a single element on screen just now. So we want to start pulling this thing apart, but this is all dynamic right now. Technically, we still really only have a single cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the array modifiers one at a time and choose this apply option just here. So when we choose apply, it will take what is currently a live effect and basically burn it into the scene. So it'll actually turn it into a real world mesh. I'm going to choose apply. Open up the second one, apply, open up the first one, apply. So you can see we are now down to no modifiers. Up here, we still have a single cube. So that's kind of interesting. We clearly have what look like many individual cubes, but this is still considered by Blender a single element. And you can see that just up here. So how do we actually pull this thing apart? Well, let's do that just now. So I have this thing selected. We can press the tab key or we can come up to where it says object mode just here and jump us into edit mode. 
you can see everything is selected. If yours isn't, just tap the A key to select everything. And then we want to go into this mesh section just here. And what we're looking for is this separate option just here. And then we want to separate by loose parts. So if I click on that, and then let's jump back into the object mode just here. And you can see all of a sudden we have a ton of new options or new items up here, rather, I should say. Might just uh, click away so nothing's selected. So you can see if we move around, everything is still visually the same. But if I scroll through here, we get to 26. Shouldn't we have 27 items? Of course we do because we have that first item just up here for cube, which doesn't have a number. So we now, guys, have our 27 separate items. And you can see if I click on any one of those, check it out. If I tap the G key now to give us the move tool, I can now independently move these around. So this is great, but there is that little problem I mentioned at the top of this video. You see that tiny little orange dot? So when I move the cube around, the tiny little orange dot is actually the origin for this guy. Now this could be a problem if, for example, I tap my R key to go into rotate. Do you see how that rotation is happening around, happening around that origin? Now that could be a little bit problematic, so I'm just going to undo a couple of steps just here. And I want to show you how you can quickly reset the origin for all of these guys. So I'm just going to tap the A key to select all of these, or I could have just selected them however you, whatever method you prefer. All of these are selected. I want to come up to the object menu, set origin, and set the origin to geometry. Now when I click on that, you see all those dots change? So now if I click on this little guy and move him over here and click on R to rotate, fantastic. The origin has been reset to the center of that cube and it has for all of these other guys as well. Let's tap R. There we go. Okay, fantastic guys. We are pretty much done at this point. So uh, I hope that helps. Uh, so the array modifier is what you use to build your tower and then you can easily pull it apart using those methods I just showed you at the end there. Hope that helps, guys. Catch you later.